off by welcoming you and thank you all for being here and letting me share my experience with problem solving and management with you. How many of you have quit a job? Um, while this may have turned out in your best interest, the truth is, is that for many organizations, uh, employee voluntary turnover can be extremely costly and detrimental to the organization. I found this to be true with my serving staff at the Weekly Wizard in Canton, Ohio. Today I'm going to share with you um, the steps that I went through to solve the problem of employee turnover at the Winking Lizard and how I developed a solution to my problem. I use the problem solving model, the team process. I'm going to briefly go over the steps with you just so that you can see the process in the big picture and then I'll break the steps down so you can understand the steps that were involved. Outline the question. Break down the issue, test the hypothesis, analyze the solution, imagine the solution, and notify the stakeholders. Outlining the question. During this step, I develop the problem statement, and also right from the beginning, a distinct goal is developed for the problem. Context and history of the problem are also revealed during the step. My problem statement is how can the Canyon Winking Lizard Tavern decrease server turnover by 20% by April 2015? The Canton server turnover rate for 2011 to 2013 has been above 40% while other locations had a low rate of 17%. The turnover issue is a problem with all departments of the Canton location generally, and the serving staff specifically. The key decision makers are the management team. They include Michael Reichert, DJ Hutchinson, Denise Rhodes, Lindsay Falvo, and the managing partner, Fred Kobowitz. The focus is what can be done to retain employees of the Winking Lizard, thus decreasing the turnover rate. By April 1st of 2014, the Winking Lizard should develop and implement an employee retention program that includes an employee incentive package and ongoing training and advancement opportunities. The next step is breaking down the issue. You can also see this as untangling the mess. I broke the, pro the problem into manageable tasks and parts. This allowed me to see the full extent of the problem so that I could ensure that I'm not missing any issues. This also allows for prioritization of work and delegation of tasks. That's especially helpful if you are using a problem-solving team. So this is the issue tree I developed. On the left, we start with the problem statement, how can turnover be decreased? And then we broke it down into questions, uh, sub-issues. And then we further broke down those into sub-issues. And then the sub-issues on the right, each of those has an action that can go with it so that if you have a problem-solving team, um, steps aren't being um, you know, done by multiple people. You're not wasting resources. Actions, um, the list right there. The next step is test the hypothesis. The obtained model is a hypothesis-driven model. It promotes logical and clear thinking. It helps identify what analysis needs to be done. So the hypothesis is done before thorough research is done. Um, this also showed me that failed hypothesis promote understanding of the problem. So my initial hypothesis was that an employee incentive package would reduce server turnover. Servers have unstable hours and hourly incomes. Servers are paid $3.93 an hour and need tips to supplement that income. And employees get sent home when a shift is not busy. Servers also do not have access to affordable health insurance, and that's a huge incentive for people to leave for other jobs. Servers also receive no discount on food, no guaranteed break, and no clothing allowance, although a strict dress code is required. 
The next step is to analyze the solution. During this step, I did a thorough data and evidence gathering process. Um, I researched and I found about 15 um, scholarly articles to support turnover and retention issues. Um, during this step, a hypothesis is confirmed, denied, or refined based on uh, findings. So during this step, um, this kind of took my focus off of what my initial hypothesis was about creating incentives through a higher income and affordable health insurance. Because what I found was that while money is important to people, it's not the most important thing. And creating incentives through other areas, um, creating value for your employees and showing them that they are being invested in was more important to employees overall, making them feel like they're not replaceable. And also, I found that it is, in fact, a problem for a turnover, that turnover is a problem for organizations. So some of the key findings to support this are high turnover results in a loss of customers. Customers complain about inconsistent service levels due to understaffing or lack of experience and knowledgeable staff, which directly results in damaging store reputation. According to Weaver and Smith, investing in employees will not only result in more productive employees, but also retention. A retention-based approach is viewed positively by employees and is characterized by investing in employees and creating value for them. And finally, 89% of managers believe that employees leave for more money, even though they own, that only 12% leave for that reason, according to the Saratoga study. Saratoga researchers believe that pay is often a smokescreen for employees' real reason for changing jobs. So imagine the solution is the next step. During this step, I advise the optimal solution. I use that foundation of evidence that I found and I followed through with innovation. I used the ABC method, which is arrange, brainstorm, and choose, and this is a basic brainstorming model. So I basically brainstormed as many possible solutions as I could to turn over, and then I grouped them into like categories, and finally I narrowed down the categories that I thought were going to be the most helpful, and then I used a criteria grid analysis and I focused on cost factors, risk, impact, and ease of implementation. And so what I found was that um, things like increasing wages and offering health insurance was gonna be very costly. It might not have the impact that I initially thought it was going to, and it wouldn't exactly be easy to implement. So I created a new solution and now we are in the notify the stakeholders phase. This is where we create compelling reports and presentations. We ensure support from stakeholders and key decision makers and devise an action plan for implementation. The solution I devised was to develop an employee retention program called Keep Them Winking. My action plan is focused on the theory that if management wants us to take care of our external customers and our guests, then they need to take care of their internal customers, their employees. So by March 1st, I would like management to meet with each employee of the serving staff the first week of each month, um, following thereafter for five to 10 minutes each meeting. This is just a simple sit down so that employees are getting consistent, regular feedback. Um, they're being like, praised for their efforts, they're feeling good about their work, and they're also free to share concerns. Basically, it's just a way for managers to show them that they care and they want to help the work environment for that employee. It's also a time they can discuss scheduling issues, if they're getting enough hours, if they want more hours, how that's going for them. And then by April 1st, I would like management to commit to a discounted employee menu 
commit to a discounted clothing plan, and commit to a dollar amount offered as a cash bonus for cross training. All of these things are going to create value for the employees. It's going to show that management wants them to stay and that they're being invested in and being taken care of. I understand that management may not be able to do a full discounted, you know, 50% off of everything, but if they like created a simple menu of healthy options like salads and wraps at a discounted price while they're working, I think that that would show employees that they're being cared about and invested in. So in summary, the solution to the turnover problem faced by the serving staff at Winking Lizard Tavern in Canton, Ohio, is to implement an employee retention program, keep them winking by April 1, 2014. The obtained problem sol solving model is an effective process based on logical thinking paired with analytical evidence. Is there any questions? Well, I have a question. Sure. The, the model that, that you are suggesting, uh, you, you indicated was hypothesis driven. Um, exactly what does that mean? You know, what? Well, in the obtain model, a hypothesis is formulated before a bulk of research is done. So you can kind of think about this um, from like a doctor patient point of view. Um, when you go to the doctor and you have symptoms, the doctor has a small understanding of what the problem is, and he, based off of his knowledge of the problem at that point, makes a hypothesis, you know, says, I think it's this. So, at that point, that hypothesis can be discarded or changed or confirmed based on testing and further research. So, it's a way to just get the problem solving process running and give you um, an avenue, a road that you know you're gonna go down, put work into that. Any other questions? I have one I'm curious about. Sure. Are the policies unique to, to this location or are they similar to all the different locations? I, I'm just curious as to why, if, if anyone has ever you know, investigated as to why the turnover rate is so high at this particular location. Well, I do. I looked at turnover rates across the board for all of the locations. Some of them were a little bit higher than ours. Some of them are around ours, and then there's some with, like I said, a, a very low turnover rate, like 17%. Um, so I know that like a 20% decrease is attainable. Is that that's an attainable goal? Um, and I do also know that. There are differences in policies. I don't know to what extent that is, but you know, other restaurants offer free meals to employees and such. I don't think that the Winking Lizard in general offers that to the service staff. Now, the Winking Lizard is, is has, have all the same ownership. It's not a franchise-based type of. Company. There are owners, but then there's managing partners. Ah. So I think by location, um, the managing partners can implement policies that they want to. That would they feel explain like the difference their location. Very good. Thank you.